G'day. Today I'm going to take you through buying a second-hand kayak. Now, if you're not in the market for, for one of these, if this isn't you, feel free to uh, move on and go about the rest of your day. Um, unless you just want to be mesmerized by the dulcet tones of my voice. So I often get asked about buying a second-hand kayak. Where do I look? What do I look for? Um, how much should I pay? What's a fair price? And let's face it, there are tons of options out there and there's a great variation in price as well. Now some might say, well, you need to work out your budget first, but I think uh, you do that a little bit later. First, you've got to work out what it is you actually want. So as I said, I think firstly you need to work out what you want. So where are you going to be paddling and what are you going to be doing? Now if you're a pre predominantly a fisherman, um, you know, sit on top style kayak is probably best for you. Maybe you want um, some rod holders, you know, depth sounder, somewhere to st storage hatches or whatever. Um, but if you just want to get out on the lakes, smooth water, short paddles, maybe you just want to go up and down the stream with your kids or whatever, maybe, well the sit on tops are still going to be good for that. Um, or maybe you want one of the smaller sit-in style kayaks. Uh, then if you're like me and you want to get out and do a bit of touring and multi-day trips and camping and get on some real adventures, you're going to want something a little bit bigger, something with some dry storage hatches front and rear. Um, if you're into ocean kayaking, then again, we're talking long, sleek um, craft, um, spray skirts and a lot of other little accessories. Um, you know, the variations just then get even greater when you start looking at hull design, like uh, the amount of rocker, the chines, um, whether it's fiberglass or plastic. I mean, um, you know, I'm not going to get into that. This is just buying, help you buying a second-hand kayak, uh, all that stuff. That's a whole other video. Um, what I will say, though, is if you're a beginner, then I would recommend probably starting out with plastic. Um, if you're near any rocks, if you're going to be, you know, pulling up to concrete boat ramps and things like that where it's likely to get scratched, then plastic is going to be far more durable for you. Now, once you know the style that you're looking for, now you can work out how much you can spend um, and what you're going to get for that price. Um, and what I'll do is I'll start looking for kayaks above this price. And I do that for two reasons. One is generally people have a little bit of wiggle room in there. Um, in their prices for negotiation and secondly you'll be surprised how many people have some really unrealistic views of what their kayak is worth 180 he's dreaming so as a bit of an extreme example I've seen one advertised for around the $1200 mark um, several months later it's down to $200 um, but it happens to a lesser degree all the time um, you'll always see people asking more than what it's worth. Um, you'll want to look at the features. So typically a kayak with a rudder uh, will fetch more money. Um, when you're looking at the, the sit on top fishing ones, there's different seats which are going to mean different money. Some will have gear track on it for your rod holders. Um, you know, do you need spray skirts, uh, dry storage hatches, um, you know, all sorts of things. And you may have to start taking a few of these off your list if it doesn't fit your budget. Um, but, but yeah, work out what you want and what's the best that you're going to get for your money. I've probably found the most drastic price variations in the sit on top ones. Um, some of those can be really cheap. So you can get a basic sit on top fishing kayak for $429. Now, um, we're talking with the paddle, with the basic seat, with a rod leash, um, with a rod holder. Uh, now, why? would you pay more than $250 for the same thing secondhand? Uh, but yet there's people out there asking double that. Now note that I said basic here, okay? I'm not talking about your five meter long pro fishing kayaks. Um, don't go messaging me saying, hey man, my Hobie's worth way more than $250. I'm talking entry level basic sit on top kayaks here. So let's compare apples with apples, right? Uh, So where to look? Now typically I'll do one of two places. I'll either jump on Facebook Marketplace 
and look there. Now, depending on where you are, this may not be too relevant for you. Um, the other place that I'll jump onto is Gumtree. Now, for us, that's um, probably, well, that's our classified ads website. And for those in the US, it's probably similar to what Craigslist or something like that. Anyway, um, but yeah, those are the two spots that I'll generally go to to find one. But wherever you wind up looking, same principles are going to apply. Now, the first thing I'll do when I'll see an ad is I'll, and you'll get you'll get a feel for this as you gain some experience. But I'll go and do a Google search, and I'll find out how much that kayak is worth, the brand and the model. So how much is it worth new? Um, I'll also look up some reviews. Um, they're really important because all. Oh, the boats handle differently. You might find um, this one's too tippy, this one is too heavy. Um, you know, some people will say this one's great, that one's great. Um, and you know, one review, you can take it with a grain of salt because what experience does that person have? But so read lots and get a general feel for what everybody seems to think of the kayak. Um, you'll also find out the weight and things like that. Um, I've saved myself before. I found that. Uh, there was one kayak that I looked at that ended up having a product recall notice on it. Um, now, the last thing you want to be doing is being out on the ocean in a kayak that has a safety recall notice. So accessories can change your price. Now, they can do that in two ways. One is um, it can reduce the cost of the kayak to purchase by selling them. Or um, if you needed to buy those things anyway, generally you're going to save a bit of money. So, for example, some will come with a kayak trolley. Now, a kayak trolley you can sell any day of the week for 40 bucks. So there's 40 bucks off the price of your your kayak straight up. If you had to, if you needed a kayak trolley and you had to buy one, um, you know, depending on how long you waited or whether you bought new, you could be anywhere between 40 and $80. Um, so, yeah, you, you're potentially saving some money there too. Same with life jackets. A lot of them come with life jackets. If you don't need it, sell it. If you do need it, great, you've saved some money. Um, if it's your second kayak, maybe you don't need the paddle, sell the paddle. Now, there's another 40 bucks. Um, some of them will come with depth sounders and, and trolling motors and all sorts of things. You can you can either sell this stuff off and, and bring the price of your kayak down or you can justify the extra price that they're asking. Um, so to give you an example, I've looked at one, I've got one here, popular fishing kayak, um, brand new, in the shop, $5.99. Now, I did a quick search on Facebook Marketplace, there's three of them for sale at the moment. So here's the first one, $550. What does it come with? Well, we've got all the standard stuff, and that's it. All the standard stuff, 550 bucks. Remember the new price, 599. Tell him he's dreaming. Okay. Second one, second one, 500 dollars. Again, what has this got? Mm, all the standard stuff, except it doesn't include the paddle. So again, 99 dollars off. Still got to buy a paddle, and essentially the exact same thing that you're buying for 599. Dream it. Now, third one. Let's see what this one. This is also five hundred dollars, but you read what it comes with straight up. You've got a Lorance Hook Two Fish Finder. Now, this doesn't look like the GPS model, so you know you. I'd say you definitely get fifty dollars, maybe a hundred dollars, ninety dollars, something like that. Um, and it's also got the kayak trolley. Now this particular brand, as I said before, you'll get 40 bucks for that every day of the week. Um, if you're happy to wait, maybe you'll get 50, 60 maybe, probably not. But um, So straight up, you've saved yourself between 100 and 150 dollars. So this 500 dollar kayak is now looking like 350 to 400, and that is getting to be a good price. So I'd be going with that one out of those three. And I suspect that one's probably not gonna last very long. So you also wanna look at what the accessories you need are gonna cost you to buy. So with an ocean kayak, for example, if it doesn't come with a spray skirt and you need one, 
you, know, you can get some cheap ones on, on eBay, $60, $70, or if you want to buy something decent, you could be paying up to $175 for. So just keep that in the back of your mind as well. Sea kayaks that come with a skirt, you're saving a lot of money. So next is the condition. Now, you can save a lot of money if you're prepared to do a little bit of work yourself. Um, I bought a 4.2 meter touring kayak. I was estimating I'd have to spend five to six hundred dollars on one um, based on what they were going for and what I wanted. Um, now, when I went to look at it, it had been stored outside and in the water. So the whole bottom was covered in barnacles. Um, the rudder foot pedal strap had snapped. The, um, the rudder retract and release cable had gone. Um, there was a dent in the bottom of it from, uh, from being sat on the ground for too long. Um, and the bungee cords were all stretched. So anyway, it looked really bad. I ended up getting it for 300 bucks. Um, took it home. I replaced the, the rudder cable with some 2mm Spectra. I bought a cable, uh, cable clamp and fixed the rudder pedal cable. I um, got a heater, heat gun, borrowed a heat gun and heated the dent out of the bottom. Uh, I said scrape all the barnacles off as well. Anyway, tightened up the bungees. Came out really good and it cost me about 12 or $15 or something like that in parts and, and my own labour. So I made a huge saving there. Um, the things that you're going to have to look out for is like cracks uh, in plastic and fiberglass. So if you don't have the skills to fix those things, it's going to cost you a bit of money to get it, get it sent away and, and done professionally. Um, a lot of dents in plastic boats can be heated out, but again, you're going to need a heat gun and your hairdryer is not going to cut it. I've heard of people leaving them sit out in the sun all day long and, um, and manage to push the dent out that way. Uh, but for me, I've, I've had to use the heat gun to get dents out. Um, so if it's a sit-in style kayak and you've got the front and rear storage hatches, just check the bulkheads here at the rear and one at the front, see if they they look watertight. Um, I have seen older plastic kayaks where those have come loose and then A, it's not going to um, give you any buoyancy if you capsize and your gear is just going to get wet as well. So try and avoid those, they can be a little bit troublesome to fix as well if they're, if they're broken. Things like electronics, so they might come with a sounder, bilge pump, um, trolling motor, whatever. So just test that they're working. And with the batteries, I tend to consider them to be uh, suspect and probably in need of replacing because you don't know if the guys charged the battery up the night before. Uh, maybe it works fine when you're testing, but after half an hour of use out in the field, uh, the battery's completely dead. So. I'll, I'll often just assume that I need to replace the battery when I'm, when I'm looking at a kayak with electronics. The other thing you want to do is you want to take a look at anything that's broken on the kayak and just search what you would need to spend to replace that before you go out. So that way you're going to get a fair idea for what it is that you're going to be up for to replace the parts and you can use that in your negotiation as well to try and bring the price down. Now, a couple of extra tips to save some money. Um, if you're prepared to travel to inspect and look at the kayak, then I recommend looking further afield, so not just in your local town. Um, people selling in towns that are out of the way, uh, they have less of a buying pool, and so A, they're more willing to negotiate, I generally find, or B, they've probably already reduced the price down a considerable amount because they just don't have the buyers in the area. Um, I've saved 300 bucks once by driving five or six hours. Um, cost me 70 bucks in fuel, but I saved 300. So to me, that was worthwhile. Um, I just did the drive one night when I had a bit of free time, and, um, and it worked out well. The other thing to keep in mind is that if you're patient enough um, and wait, the right price will come up, providing you're not being too ridiculous in what you what you want but you will have to jump fast because when there's a good deal out there like the one I had just before they don't last very long um, I've missed out on kayaks within you know 20 minutes of them being posted before because someone has just snapped it up really quick so yeah you've got to have the cash you've got to be ready to go and uh, and you've got to know what you're looking for but yeah if uh, if you're on a tight budget patience is the key
anyway, I hope this has helped you. I hope it's given you some ideas, maybe um, you know, given you a bit of a better idea on how to get a fair price um, on what you're buying. Kayaking is so much fun, um, and it's something that you can keep doing well into your retirement. Like I'm out there paddling with people in their 70s all the time, and I'm not just talking, you know, one or two kilometres. I'm talking we're doing 30 kilometre ocean paddles. So. Uh, yeah, there's no excuse. There's no age limit as far as I'm concerned. Like, um, it is just a fantastic activity. So, yeah, get out there and start looking, and then maybe I'll see you out on the water one day soon. But um, yeah, if you like my content, hit subscribe, hit like, hit the little bell notification so you get get an alert. And um, yeah, until next time, get out and find a kayak and get out beyond your backyard. Tell him he's dreaming. Yeah.